hi guys welcome to a very very interesting and certainly one of my favorite videos on accounting income versus the economic income well why is it of interest to me is because it tends to confuse the students a lot and therefore it is of particular interest to the faculty now here what you have to just you know uh, keep in mind is that we are trying to talk about different parameters I mean parameter as in the terms I mean one term for example is an accounting income which is being used in a particular context has a particular purpose while the other term might not be an absolutely uh, let's say a, a perfect proxy for the other uh, and maybe you know would be used in a different context so let's not try to treat them as substitutes but try to understand the context and the logical difference between the two so we all are aware as to what is your accounting income which is not none other than the reported PAT which is profit after tax and the lessons on FRA would have already given you enough handle on how do you calculate your accounting income so typically to, to give you a glimpse you know of the practice example you have sales minus you know COGS to gives you gross profit minus selling general and administrative to give you EBITDA so that's where you know I'm going to start my example for you and here then you deduct the accounting depreciation why I'm writing accounting specifically because there are two types of depreciation that you will be exposed to you get something called as EBIT which is also called as your operating income and from where if you deduct your interest which is typically you know on the debt capital uh, you know you get your EBI, EBT which is your profit before tax let's say tax being deducted of 40% you get your accounting PAT so that's a typical accounting income that you you know have been aware of now what is an economic income well economic income is the Delta or the value add which a business has been able to earn but the way you have to calculate the delta is a little different now there are two differences that we are going to talk about here the first and an easy different to understand is that the economic income does not consider interest expense as a deduction so imagine the same table if I have to create exactly the same table without the interest into it it's going to look something like that wherein all of the figures remaining constant your interest element getting on to zero so your EBIT and EBT becomes one and the same thing and you get your PAT equivalent to 48,000 so please appreciate that this PAT is not the accounting PAT instead it is the PAT assuming that there is no interest okay so that's the first difference that you have with your economic income versus the accounting income conceptually economic income is more of a valuation parameter therefore it considers that your interest cost which is essentially your KD 1 minus T is not part of your cash flows but is part of the discount rate which will be used to discount the cash flows hence to avoid the double counting it doesn't impact the cash flows because of that same logic you know that we have been using in calculating something called as CFAT cash flow after taxes you know for capital budgeting as well the second difference is on the amount of depreciation that it considers and that's where a little confusion tends to crop in now depreciation per se as a fundamental is fall in the value okay now whose value are we talking about as an accountant I am too bogged down by the historical cost that I have recorded in my books and therefore it is always the historical costs that I tend to depreciate okay and you know accumulated depreciation you know you get your net book value or the amortized cost so on and so forth so as an accountant I tend to do that but not as an economist as an economist I have to be much more relevant and linked to the market so my economic depreciation is typically the fall in the value the same concept but of the market value of the property plant and equipment or let's say the project that we are talking about so while accounting depreciation works on the book value your economic depreciation works on the market value that's broadly the difference so so let me try and establish a connect now the connect that I have you know, tried to establish I'm going to come to finally the economic income here but before that I have to make you understand how do you arrive at this CFAT because CFAT also 
is a parameter that we have been extensively using in our capital budgeting. And if you have looked at all the videos carefully, there were two methods of arriving at CFAT uh, from you know, the overall cash flow. So, so one was the PAT plus depreciation, which is essentially this depreciation. The other one was profit before depreciation and tax, 1 minus T plus depreciation into tax saving. So since the starting point given to me is this PAT, PAT already, I'm going to add back this accounting depreciation. Now you must be wondering as to when I had explained to you the calculation of PAT, uh, you know, earlier in my, you know, uh, session on CFAT, I never adjusted the interest element out of that. Again, for a very simple reason that when we talk about the capital budgeting, pretty much like economic income, your CFAT is also a valuation parameter. So the basic assumption of CFAT and parameters like economic income is that the PAT that we are talking about is the one which is excluding the interest adjustment. So we have assumed while calculating CFAT that there is no interest to be paid. So therefore, the PAT that we had started with is this 48. What I'm trying to say is in this equation where you have to do the adjustment for interest, the PAT that you have to start with is 42. You do the interest adjustment, which is you have to add back the after tax interest of 6,000 to arrive at a total of 48,000. Honestly speaking, in a strict accounting term, whatever we have been taking up in CFAT so far as PAT is nothing but your EBIT after taxes. Okay. Now imagine, you know, th this is a simple maths and therefore, you know, I wanted you to, you know, not to get confused in that. There is a bit of accounting involved undoubtedly, but, but that's okay. So if I have to calculate the after tax parameter for each of those, my EBT after tax is going to be 48,000. My EBIT after tax is also going to be 48,000. My accounting EBIT after tax, $48,000, is nothing but the PAT that I've been using in corporate finance so far with an assumption that there is no interest. Okay, so please just keep this simple diagram in perspective you do not have to get confused with it because this calculation is going to be repeated in your equity module wherein we will try and calculate the free cash flow to form and there you know i will talk about that cfat is very very similar to free cash flow to form it's just that we use cfat in context of corporate planning and we use uh, corporate finance and we use free cash flow to firm in context of equity module both are after tax both are operational and both are in cash terms so these are the three similarities between two and you know we are going to talk about that so so net point is that if your pat already has a deduction of interest then you got to add back the interest after tax because pat is also after tax so you add back the interest after tax but if the pat given to you in the question doesn't have an interest adjustment into it doesn't have any interest deduction from it that means there is no need to you know do any kind of a you know interest adjustment then you are here already and then you just have to add back the accounting depreciation to arrive at something called a cfat now cfat like i've been saying can be calculated by three means and you know this, this is the simpler of the two so I've already calculated the one using the equation wherein we started with accounting PAT, add back the interest, 10,001 minus T, and the accounting depreciation of 68. So you can just, you know, check the other two in the solution as to what are the different ways of arriving at the CFAT. A very clear understanding would be, you know, you would be able to calculate the same 68,000 if you have already looked at you know, the video on how to calculate CFAT as part of the initial recordings of capital budgeting. Now, the question is, how do I relate this CFAT with the economic income? And the answer to that is that once you are here at CFAT with a number of, how much was the number? Uh, it was 68,000. If let's say you're already here, what you have to just deduct is the economic 
depreciation you know that is given to me in question equivalent to 14 so I arrive at a number of fifty four thousand dollars as economic income a couple of points economic income is not entirely a cash concept for a simple reason that you are deducting something non-cash which is economic depreciation so therefore um, I tend to say that economic income is sort of an accrual number the second observation economic income is still much more market linked and related to cash therefore it's still a valuation parameter so try to appreciate this point that PAT and CFAT are two different extremes and economic income tends to create a bridge between the two in the sense PAT is accrual and economic income is also accrual but on the other hand CFAT is valuation specific same is the case with economic income so economic income tend to possess characteristic of PAT as well as CFAT okay economic depreciation what's that it is basically the change in the market value and it's very simple to understand the end in market value and the beginning market value so there's there's nothing great about that one very very critical piece of advice very critical piece of advice and this is where you know a lot of confusion tend to crop up your economic income is not same as economic profit which we are going to talk about in the next session your economic profit on the other hand is equal to residual income is equal to the delta NPV that the project has been able to generate every year okay so we are going to talk about that separately please do not get confused that your economic income and economic profit are same very very different there is there is no connect between the two okay so how, how do I calculate the economic income of 54,000 again the so, so the concept is similar if let's say I start with CFAT of 68 then I simply deduct the economic depreciation okay I can avoid calling something as CFAT and rather do the steps so all three steps put together gives me something called as CFAT so if all the three steps I put together it tends to give me something called as CFAT and then I reduce the economic depreciation to get the same 54,000 so all I'm trying to again and again you know uh, reiterate the point is that you do not have to ratify these adjustments it is very very dangerous that you know you do interest plus or depreciation plus or blah 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 it depends upon where you are standing and where you have to go if you're already given CFAT in a particular question then the question of doing these three adjustments does not arise if you have to move this way but from CFAT if you have to move towards PAT then the question of economic depreciation adjustment doesn't arise you're getting my point so you have to be very very careful and you know uh, very very precise in what you tend to do and this is where you know I was talking about that if these two figures are already combined and this is what we call as PAT for corporate finance capital budgeting because in capital budgeting we assume that the interest costs are never deducted from the profits because they're part of the working uh, WACC which is you know your back so therefore your pad which is given is always without interest and that's where you know I had come out with this 48,000 so if that 48,000 is given then you don't need to do this interest adjustment separately now I hope that you know this is pretty clear yeah so uh, so I'm sure that you know there, there are some confusions which are still there I want you to just look at this base example and try and redo all the figures try and calculate the same CFAT and same economic income by different okay so uh, beg your pardon there's a little you know this thing this is economic income maybe just a copy paste is and this is exactly what is the template error I was talking about now you tend to copy paste you know from one part to the other so the, I, I had these cells already written as CFAT so I tend to copy paste it and therefore I forgot to change it at couple of places this is exactly what is the template error that we were talking about when we're talking about the pitfalls to the capital budgeting manager okay so I hope that you know this session has brought in some clarity I'm sure for more that you'll have to study a little bit 
um, should you have any query reach out to me at ankur.k at finstudyclub.com we'll be very happy to help thank you